Padre Pio's Knowledge Volume 1, Author Wiswa, Matuk Padre Pio's knowledge is a message from the beyond to all mankind, which Padre Pio conveyed through Wiswa Matuk after his death. It is knowledge that has been hidden for thousands of years. Knowledge not only about our planet, uncomfortable and difficult, yet optimistic knowledge that encourages spiritual growth. This knowledge will be a huge challenge for many, but also a true treasure of the heart. It addresses simultaneously the causes of suffering and the pursuit of perfection. Let's start from the beginning. The creation of the material world presents itself differently than we have been given for years. Padre Pio states, God created heaven and angels only once. He has created nothing until now. However, after a wonderful, beautiful and miraculous life in heaven, some of the angels decided to leave heaven to create their alternative miracles. Well, freedom of choice. Endowed with God's mighty powers, they posited their own private heavens. What we see through telescopes, the cosmos, star systems, planetary systems, became a new heaven for the risk-taking angels. Our earth also belongs to it. It is quite possible to say that each of us today is a fallen angel. Billions of years ago, we took part in the escape from the original heaven. We created material worlds, as it turned out later, very unreliable and imperfect. Through the quarrels and struggles of the angels, evil and suffering were omitted. The original sin of Adam and Eve is only synonymous with what happened in heaven, where it was decided to leave the wonderful heavenly life. Freedom, curiosity and pride were the reasons for going beyond the veil of heaven to create their own palaces of happiness. As we already know from experience, the project failed. A tremendous number of problems and suffering arose. After separation from God, the power began to weaken. There was a lack of power to live. It was realized that a huge mistake had been made by walking away from God. Despite the bad consequences, strategic decisions were made. However, the rebellious angels would sustain the work of their hands. The cosmos drawing into its souls who had lost hope of true heaven. This is still happening today. Billions of civilizations spread across countless galaxies, function in suffering without heaven and God. They all fell into a controlled wheel of reincarnation to produce energy in order to sustain life, which was supposed to be a wonderful heaven and entertainment. The plan has gone wrong. Souls are suffering torment, no longer knowing the reasons and truth of their existence complete degradation. We have been robbed of our memory. The fallen angels have wandered our souls across different planets, galaxies, civilizations. This wandering has been going on for billions of years. They have created a system that separates us from the truth. It separates us from the true heaven, and above all from the magnificent eternal God, commonly referred to as love itself. However, most of the angels did not leave and remained in the original heaven. God first decided to lend a helping hand to his fallen children. He continues to do so to this day. Hence, he sends beings from heaven from time to time to help civilizations in the galaxies. Many souls have already received this help in the form of liberating knowledge. They have been able to return to heaven. But it is a difficult mission to transmit heavenly knowledge in the material cosmos almost always breakneck. The rulers of the cosmos do not want this help and set everyone against God, and the sent ones who are anointed with harm even kill them. In a word, satanic federations do not forgive, which is why this suffering lasts so long. Nevertheless, knowledge is slowly breaking through to the angels, willing to return. Many souls have already saved themselves, left the utopian cosmos heaven. They have found their way, thanks to the help of wonderful envoys, to the source from which they left at the beginning of their escape. The material cosmo closed itself to the knowledge of God, forbade communication with him. But thanks to the fact that God gave us a hand and sends brave angels from heaven from time to time into the realm of matter, knowledge multiplies. It becomes a treasure, because through its souls begin to understand cause and effect. Through forbidden knowledge from heaven, souls are helped to leave the evil heaven. 
they learn anew that the original heaven exists. They begin to move towards it on their own, through spiritual development. Eventually, they reach the goal and enter the heaven created by God, not by colleagues and mates, as is the case with material galaxies. This is what salvation is all about. Knowledge is liberation, and with the help of love of God and neighbor, it becomes salvation. One such brave angel was Padre Pio. He is incarnated and born on our earth with a plan to pass on secret knowledge. He becomes a monk and a saint of the Catholic Church, where he is persecuted, like many other saints. In obedience to the Church, he carries out his secret mission to convey the original knowledge from heaven. He begins his activities, hidden from the world and the Church, during his lifetime and continues them after his death, to this day. This book of knowledge by Padre Pio meets the criteria necessary for understanding life. It reveals the universe from beginning to end. It teaches about the original heaven. It hints how to reach it. The practical advice and spiritual knowledge contained in this book, inspired by Padre Pio guarantees every person who will study it, that after death he can receive his salvation. He can count on getting out of the circle of cosmic light and out of his own DNA, which has trapped everyone in a hell of suffering. Padre Pio's book of knowledge can be opened to any page and started reading. Short thoughts, tied together with the buckle of concise knowledge, give the reader a comfort of thinking with full collections of wisdom and knowledge. Biography I was born in a small town in Kolbusowa near Reso on February 20, 1958. Let me warn you that my path is strewn with a big book of great adventures probably so that I could understand myself and others better. I never had bad intentions in anything, and I never consciously did anything wrong. This was simply the way my life on earth was organized. I discovered my path as a young man, not alone. I was helped by ordinary people, mystics and scientists from this world, and from that world. I have been consciously pursuing my afterlife story from the moment I learned about it. The in-depth and fundamental discovery of this path came in two stages. At the age of 17 and in Krakow, when I turned 20, I will briefly describe all this and why I started writing reflections on life. In fact, they are the most important and are the essence of things, not the biography. It only served for this, so that the writings were created to help space travelers. I dedicated them in their entirety to Jesus' mother. As a young boy I loved bicycles and motorcycles. I enjoyed fixing them together with my brothers. My father was a car mechanic. So I got some training in understanding how engines operate. After graduating from elementary school, I went to a vocational school with a watchmaking profile. However, later I went to a motor vehicle engineering high school. I didn't graduate from it. Shortly thereafter, something happened that I could not have expected. I made a completely different life decision. As a 17-year-old, I attended premarital meetings because there was nothing else in the parish. Unfortunately, the only boy in a group of girls much older than me. The weekly meetings were led by a very pretty 30-year-old nun named Malgor Zata. She saw that I was reflective, asking questions, etc. She looked at me in particular. After less than a year, she asked if I would like to join a religious order. Then I experienced a sudden enlightenment and answered her. Of course, I would like to, and so it began. I received a book about St. Stanislaw Koska from the parish priest. I read it with tears in my eyes. It was already certain that I would decide to go to the Jesuit monastery in Stara Wies near Brzozau. I arranged everything and entered the novitiate. The climate enchanted me. Two years of spiritual feasting, discipline like in the army and even more so. Everyday mass, meditation, reflection in the afternoon, and work in the garden. Books, a huge library to read. From all this spiritual wealth, I could use as much as I wanted. To live, not to die, I was happy. Confrères polite friendly. I showed zeal and conscientiousness. The spiritual master was very pleased with me. After the two-year novitiate, I was sent to Krakow. I worked at the Apostolate of Prayer Publishing House at 26, Copernica Street, first in accounting, and then in the bookstore as an expeditor. 
I sold books and religious items. I had no desire to be a priest, but a humble religious brother, and with this I remained. With the seminarians, I founded a music band called Inigo. We traveled around parishes and played at masses, followed by many concerts of religious songs. I have some commemorative photos. In the monastery, I also met a religious brother 30 years older than me, Ludwig. Friendship with him caused my intellectual and spiritual life to radically change. We talked a lot about Hinduism, about reincarnation, etc. He knew all this, although this knowledge was officially forbidden. Finally, he told me the thing I had been subconsciously waiting for a long time. He announced to me that in Nawa Huta near Krakow it was possible to talk to Padre Pio through Mrs. Christina. What do you mean? I asked. Ludwig smiled. But without thinking, I immediately believed and longed for these talks. As I found out later, Ludwig had previously asked Padre Pio if he could bring me in for conversations with him. Padre agreed. Ludwig was overjoyed about this. However, not everyone was allowed to talk. There were nuns who were refused by the Padre because they did not believe him. For the first six months, Ludwig suggested that I ask questions to Padre Pio by letter. I would write the questions on a piece of paper, and Ludwig would take them with him to the meeting, and either Padre would respond right away, or the letter would be left with Mrs. Christina. Only after a few days I received a response. To this day I have kept one letter. The rest I burned, because I was afraid that the matter would reach the superiors, and they would expel me from the monastery. Padre Pio later told me that I had done well. Ludwig also hid everything from the superiors. After some time, it turned out that one of the superiors also talked to Padre Pio in Nawahuta. After a long time, Ludwig announced to me that it was time to talk directly to Padre Pio, so off we went. At first, the usual conversation with Mrs. Christina. After a long while, Padre Pio joined the conversation. Christina, sitting down, made a nice grimace while closing her eyes and Padre Pio stepped in. He crossed himself and I heard from his lips. Peace be with you. The conversation began. First, he told me that he missed me very much and was waiting to talk to me. What followed was just crying. An amazing experience. In that first conversation, Padre Pio told me all about my future life. He outlined the profile of why I am here on earth and what I will be doing. He added, it will be a great book of great adventures. He said that I have to go through all the states to understand other people, and that all of heaven sent me here. The most important thing he said was that I must write, write, write. Short thoughts, concise, in simple language. Write new things, not just what has already been written in the church. I thought, what am I supposed to write if I don't know anything? And indeed, for nearly a year I did not touch a pen. Padre at every subsequent meeting reminded, and admonished me to finally start writing. Seeing my powerlessness, Padre advised me to pick up some books, read and finally write something in my own way. It helped. Suddenly I started writing even poems. It gave me great joy. That's how I started my adventure with writing. At another conversation Padre said, if you won't write you will go mad. I have to admit years later that he was right. I was forced to write by being dissatisfied with myself. As soon as I stopped writing, I became nervous. While writing, I was almost in heaven. This convinced me that I was better off writing after all. I was becoming calmer and exploring. I am not a writer but I write. I am still amazed by it to this day. For talks Padre Pio brought many saints. I talked to almost all the main ones of our church. Among others with Nun Faustina, Queen Hedwig, Teresa of Avila, John Bosco, Michael the Archangel with Francis of Assisi, who identified himself as my first patron, with whom I dated many lifetimes back, specifically, 1,500 years ago. At the same time, he said that it doesn't matter if I'm in the monastery or out of it, and so I will do what I have to do, he added. God keeps his word. John Bosco and Teresa of Avila told me that they would be constantly at my writing in my mind. That's why it came so easily to me to write about important things. Padre Pio told me, God gave you such a head to understand great things. In the meantime, 
Many people began to come to me at the monastic gate to talk about spiritual matters. I will mention one particular example. The assistant of the famous draftsman, Prof. Victor Zinn, used to come to our church. More than once I served mass, reading designated passages of sacred scripture. So she would see me. One day the priest porter calls me that I have a visitor downstairs. I go down, look through the window and see an elderly lady. I ask what I can help with. She replies that she wanted to talk to me. Sure, I replied. I took the key to the conversation room. We sat down and the conversation began. She told me that she did not know why. But she had to talk to me because that was what her heart was telling her to do. I was surprised. I won't describe everything here. Because there wouldn't be enough pages. However, the finale was that we became friends. I showed her my typewritten thoughts. She took them to read. After a few days she visited me again. She liked them very much, and they strengthened her spiritually. Given that, she was single and had more time for herself, she decided to personally transcribe my thoughts and have them bound by a bookbinder. And so our cooperation began. She transcribed and bound several hundred pages. To this day I still own two volumes. Mrs. Halinka was a very talented person. She painted pictures and enjoyed all subtleties of beauty. She liked my writings and poems so much that she decided to do spiritual literary evenings with student youth. For several years she conducted such meetings. Professor Zinn himself invited Halinka with students to his house several times. His rooms were fairly large so everyone fit in. My poems and various selected thoughts were read by the students often to the backing of music and slides projected on the wall. Friendship with Halinka lasted a very long time, until her death. Now I would like to describe the story of when I was transferred from the Wham Publishing House to St. Barbara's Church on the small market square. I became a sacristan. Lots of people came there to request Mass. I entered the intentions in the book and collected the fees. Paying for Masses made me very angry. But what was I supposed to do? It belonged to my duties. Meanwhile, of course, I spoke to Padre Pio in Nawahuda. As usual, people came again to talk to me about spiritual matters. There were also poor people, drunks, drug addicts coming though. I sympathized with everyone. I finally dared to take a step that was disloyal to the monastery. I thought, so many are in need and I live almost like a king. I decided to share my money with the poor. Every day the faithful paid me at Mass, so there was an opportunity. In the request for Mass, I understated the amount entered in the book, and distributed the rest to the poor. It went on like this for a long time. At one point I got scared, because more and more interested people were coming to the sacristy. I was being watched by my superiors. As a result, I decided to make arrangements with them outside the monastery. I brought them money in certain places. I was very happy to share with them, as befits a religious brother. However, the monastery, it wouldn't like it. I asked Padre Pio at the talks if I should continue this? He answered yes, but I have to be very careful, because the superiors are looking at my hands. And in order to check me, bills were marked. However, I always succeeded. Such one of many adventures. I will also describe one more story from the small market square. Padre Pio at the conversation informed me that in a while two teenagers would come to see me. Then I would help them. Maybe a month has passed. A girl and her boyfriend report to the gate. As I was getting a lot of people coming to me, the priest porter immediately called for me that there was someone waiting. I went downstairs, saw them and immediately knew that they were guests from Padre Pio. They needed food and sleep. They had run away from home and ended up here all the way from Silesia. So I took care of them right away. I asked the nuns in the kitchen if they could give me what was left over from dinner. I quickly fed them. Well, but there was a problem with the accommodation. After all, they were teenagers. The superiors would not agree. I took the matter into my own hands. On the first night, I located them in the visiting room by the gate. On the second one, I also succeeded, and then the next, it was winter. After a few days, the priest porter began to suspect something. I had to come up with something else. 
As I was the one who opened and closed St. Barbara's Church, it was not large and heated. I decided to make them stay overnight behind the altar. At night, I would let them in. And in the morning I would feed them and let them out into the city. This is how it went on for many days. Of course, I talked to them about their problems. When they left, they wrote me letters. I did what I had to do. Especially since Padre Pio had announced their visit to me much earlier. After a while, I no longer enjoyed life among the Jesuits. I was grossed out by the wealth and freedom. I needed more discipline and strict rules. I decided to change to a Franciscan order. I made a visit to their monastery. When I saw how they lived there I thought, it's even richer after all than where I am. I left the urge. I decided to look for something more austere. The direction was the Camaldolese Monastery near Krakow. I went there. The prior of the monastery greeted me warmly. We talked for a long time. He stated that I was suitable. I could come. I was immensely happy. But on the other hand there was a hint of anxiety. Would I be able to isolate myself from the world? Strict cloistering, single cells and lifelong silence. I did not inform Padre Pio of my intentions to change the order at the talks. I wanted it to be my decision. However, when the time came to go to the Camaldolese, I decided to ask Padre Pio how he perceived it. He briefly told me, you have too rich a heart, you wouldn't last there. It was like a weight's been lifted. I calmed down. Father knew my capabilities and tensions, but also fears. So I remained where I was as a friar in a Jesuit monastery. At the age of 24, I decided to leave the monastery. I already felt too cramped in it. Ludwig was very much in favor of me taking a different life for myself. So I got married to experience a family warmth. However, I continued to write my thoughts and poems. Padre Pio said he wanted to become a grandfather. He became one. I have two children, Wanzia and Swawik. I raised them as best I could. I graduated from an agricultural technical school part-time. I worked all my life, including as a digital machine operator at Zito Roxwa. We got M5, a large apartment. As my wife was a teacher, we were entitled to one extra room. However, before that, I had worked physically for a year on the patronage building for 10 hours a day. Therefore, we got the apartment faster. Well, but another adventure awaited me. After 25 years of marriage, I got divorced. I relinquished the house to the children. I won't describe everything, because a lot of good things happened over the years. I could write a separate book about it. Therefore it will be brief, now I am free. I am honing my writings and taking the next steps that Padre Pio has envisioned for me. The announced Great Book of Great Adventures is coming true. I still have some years left. Padre Pio told me that I will live a long time because I will be needed. So there will probably be more adventures to come. However, my main mission and adventure was to write and publish this book. To ensure that even after my death, the knowledge of Padre Pio can be used. Even if you help one soul it is already a lot, and you can help many. This is what Padre Pio told me. I spoke with Padre Pio for more than 30 years. He conveyed a vast amount of spiritual knowledge to me. I have included all this in my writings. In them I quote some of Padre Pio's direct statements. He wanted me to dedicate these writings to the Blessed Mother, which I hereby did. In the book, The Knowledge of Padre Pio, I put a lot of different thoughts about life, the church, the world, and the cosmos on causes and effects, on the soul and the body, on virtue, habits and sin, and mainly on love because this basically what Padre Pio told me to write about. You can read the book at random, wherever you open it. The thoughts are from different years, but recently refined by me to further reflect the climate of knowledge that accompanied my conversations with Padre Pio. Padre Pio's Book of Knowledge 1. I will now say a little jokingly and perversely. There are no ideals in ideality. Even in heaven you can argue. But on a different level of understanding your needs than on earth. Even God is not ideal because he created souls who through freedom and opportunity created evil. Although I justify him entirely at this point, he could not have done otherwise to keep us free. Freedom is freedom and he respects that. What humans and angels have messed up, 
They must repair alone and in the soul, and in the universe as a community. There is no ideal, only ideas are ideal. I hope that they are our God, Mom, Partner, Eternal Fairyland of Happiness. Even for God you have to find justification, from yourself and from others. Padre Pio's words. 2. Of course, religions were founded by God's aliens from the fallen sky. It is worth noting, we too are aliens in the cosmos. Fact, no religion is consistent in itself and in relation to other religions, whether scientific, philosophical theories of life. Just as aliens fight for influence in areas in the galaxy, like politicians and leaders for the borders of our countries, so they fight for our views, thinking and religion. In a word, they fight for our souls to suck up to them. This energy is sustained further and perpetuated unnecessarily. 3. Intelligence is that the higher it is, it can be meaner. That's why super high beings from our cosmic worlds don't want to let go. But the only way for them not to manipulate us on our higher consciousness is unconditional love. They know about it, but don't apply it. That's why this utopian world still wrongly exists. Where there is a pure soul, it is immediately sensed, and religious doctrines only falsify its image. 4. I trust Christ, who was born on purpose in the world's worst nation to impart knowledge and love. He partially succeeded. But civilization has manipulated almost 100% of his teachings. Only his two sentences about the love of God and man are enough. Jesus did not establish any religion or sect but only preached goodness and love to all, especially to the Jews. But they did not want to listen to him. Christian religions, an artificial creation along with their liturgies, Jesus did not build a single church, Padre Pio's words. This proves something. He was all about the association of love, intellectual and spiritual. He even says that it is you who are the temple of God, in which dwells love for all. The kingdom of heaven good and love dwells in our midst, but since there is already this church made of bricks and baptism, it can be used in part for growth. There is still much to be changed in it, though, cleansed of forms, shapes, dogma, meaningless rules and stuck views. Silence. Oh, it's you who loves the sublime, the only one running divinely in a flared robe flanking the city around you. You're looking for a place where the vine blooms you turn around and you cannot enjoy the view. Behind your veil you perceive the sacred gold blue and the sacred walls of your bridegroom clothed with light. Your young face laughs, and you tremble through this vision coated with transparent wisdom. Necklaces flared on your neck and sweeter has become your love than wine. Tremendous happiness you hold in your hands. With the stars you breathe remembrance and watchfulness constant. You joyfully convene for the celebration of your loved ones. You think of the crystal mountains with eyelids closed in happiness with the triple love of the lips of thought and heart. Every breath and power you give yourself to the supreme love six. For me, the term gods means only one thing. Namely, they are beings who have violated the order of true love. In stories and myths, they were called gods. As a result, they are all sorts of beings who impersonate the Supreme One and True God, such as the pharaohs who ascribe divine attributes to themselves. There are, of course, many more examples. Among them are also aliens who came to our planet, and people paid homage to them, as gods or a god. No need to be surprised, because that's the way life is. Unoriginal, far from the source. That's why it's so incredibly complicated. Someday we will discover it to the end what kind of gods they are, whole, a void within a void. To feel emptiness, you have to think. And pain is a story that happened completely unnecessarily. Pain was never in the plans of mind. That's why from the heart, no one, neighbor or self, ever wishes suffering, but rather peace and love. This is such a heartfelt remnant of the unexpected occurrence of suffering. It happened to minds that thought they could do everything, and that they remain unlimited in anything. This lack of humility before the inner mind generated suffering. Priests, yogis, also generate them even then, and perhaps especially when they think they have achieved nirvana and salvation. How much hubris is involved, still, 
When I think of love, illuminations come to my mind. I see it where it can hardly be seen. 9. The system has created a system that is falling apart. 10. Positively elated with humanism in our eyes, we admire the wonderful nature, animals, human love. But, if one were to look more deeply into the animal world, one would see that there is a constant horror going on there. Power, domination, bloodshed. Well, but this is what even today the church does not see. It teaches that this world is ruled by God and he made it beautiful. And I say no, the church is wrong. I would add that the great ones in this church knew this truth, but about the nuances between heaven and hell, they are still silent. 11. When you get what Jesus deciphered only at the end of his life, you will be able to be head in many worlds you have never seen before, and you will be amazed at how wonderful it is. To the human eye, it could even be an abomination. That's why only those crazy with love for God can see it. 12. Love is crazy fast and violent, like a ray of light. It wants to have everything at once. There is nothing to surprise it. Such is its unfathomable divine nature. Let's hope I can keep up with it. I'm not surprised at Jesus when he understood this and said, The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and violent men conquer it. 13. Regarding our solar system, there is life in it, but only in one place besides our planet. It exists on one of Jupiter's moons, where there is a lot of water. But it is different life than on Earth words of Padre Pio. It will soon be discovered. 14. Love only makes sense in one case, when love sees the other love. Otherwise it will remain a lonely island not needed by anyone. This has bodily and spiritual expression, in different material worlds and in heaven the same. If, by some miracle, you were born on a beautiful planet, and were exclusively alone on it, after time you would simply be very bored. That's why such a revealing thought and question came to my mind. Did God by any chance have the same problem? He made a decision and exploded his vitality, so that something would finally begin to happen before his eyes. Focusing his eternal sexual energy, he emanated independent angels, for fun and eternal companionship in the kingdom of heaven. This is why it is said that God is love. 15. In fact, only love is the best meditation. All methods, rules, styles of handling own body are only aids of little value, really insignificant. Love if it is not there, everything languishes becomes unpleasant, even vicious. Without it follows a gray, economic, philosophical, even biotechnological unbearable life. Without the joy of existence, the source of which is a loving soul, we only manage to languish. Love fills everything and abolishes all laws. But how to apply it nowadays? The utopia of materialism constantly cuts off the wings of love, so that it cannot soar high and take root in every person. Materialism can be mitigated by seeing it in spite of everything romantic beauty, capable of arousing feelings and emotions. Then we will overcome it, and we will bring to its surface the most beautiful feeling we have, love and adoration. But it takes effort and thinking in this direction, empiricism and pain. On the flowers of pain, the whole soul and body embraced by the movement of creative art, suffering like the background of a painting determined the imagination transformation and how close we are to beauty. Legitimacy does not separate thoughts of beauty. Imagination of good is the urgent task of art maintaining health intellectual play promotes the understanding of the evolution value. While irreversible is perfection in the system of cognition, a task easy, but what distance from transcendence? Empirical contact is just a substitute for happiness in the pain of human ignorance. Today I already know it. 16. We are all so manipulated that we do not notice that this world was not created by God the wise and true, but by a false God in the form of angels, which left heaven. Today some call them Satans, or in other words, races of beings in the galaxies. Satan can also love, but in a different way he is wise, scientific and almost never forgives, he is fierce. Hopefully, until the time comes, beyond this earth, much more terrible things are happening. The kingdoms of these angels are comforts, conveniences, high technology and balls of hatred. The earth has already freed itself from them a bit. 
through such emissaries from heaven as Jesus was, in a way a good friend of all the rebellious scientists. But there were others before him who helped in understanding life. Jesus is one of many heavenly envoys. Recently, Padre Pio was here camouflaged in a church, a religious order, pilloried by authority, rules and with his hands tied. He said very great things, but only in person to some prepared to do so. Most often in the confessional, the church has no clue about Padre Pio, nor St. Francis of Assisi, nor many other emissaries from heaven similar to Jesus. All of them had their biographies and views changed after time, and there is little we can learn beyond the official knowledge of the church. 17. If someone would like to be fulfilled in religion, I highly recommend Catholicism, despite everything. As it is the most appropriate religion for 2000 years words of Padre Pio, based on love of God and neighbor, and it is possible to live in it. While growing in virtue, goodness and tolerance, this frees us from hatred, greed and ignorance. Love in the Catholic way effectively heals our soul blemish. Catholicism is not only a duocracy, but there are many wonderful holy people there, not necessarily named saints. Catholicism helps transform through the gift of reincarnation the chosen people into positive people, without ambitions of power and terror, into respectful people, friendly to this planet, environmentally oriented. Even in these hopelessly difficult conditions of intellectual and material existence. 18. Let's ask the question, why is it so difficult to get out of this cosmic madness? Galaxies are hard work. In my opinion, there is a very simple answer to this. That's because someone intelligent, and at the same time terrible, through his manipulated followers, controls everything here. Our birth, reactions, knowledge and even tries to capture our feelings. Another question, what would be his purpose in doing so? There is only one answer, lack of power, the lack in universes of the divine perpetual motion machine. This is the reason. It has been learned to draw power and energy from the divine soul, which cannot be modified or put to death, so that this world, beautiful and lousy at the same time, can still exist. The only question is why? Jesus knew the answer to that. 19. Someone cares about being God number two, and here is the reason for our birth, life and death. Because from this convoluted life it is necessary to draw energy to sustain the existence of the fallen cosmos. And so that at our expense not only, but also at the expense of other living beings, they live here like in paradise. In the name of their own convenience and power, they destroy everyone and everything and at the same time they sustain this chaos into existence so that it produces invisible energy derived from pain and pleasure. This is how it is here unfortunately. Those who have eyes can see this problem, but not everyone manages to decipher it. Let me remind you, we too were those powerful beings of evil, angels after coming out of heaven. Now we were thrown out of the paradise of pleasure, science and progress to be executed because we began to return to the love of the one father mother. We escaped them with our faith and intuition, desires for divinity and eternal life. We were thrown to the edge of rich galaxy at the moment on this planet. The saints showed how to end this cosmic life positively through total love and purity of intention. 20. A woodpecker taps on a tree and the worm cries. Because the woodpecker was created by another god, and the worm by a different one. Competition against territory and nature. Such frivolous are the gods creators of hopeless nature as we know it. In creating the differences of animals and nature, they have forgotten how it was in heaven, or do not even want to hear about it. This is called hubris, the hypocrisy of own inner medium, the sacrum. 21. All densities are within us and around us, but the soul is not subject to any of them. It is above this and that. With light and colorful love we can overcome everything, all densities, all heavens of fallen angels. So galaxies and those dimensions we try to scientifically even name, explaining all this through theories of strings, spins, photons, quanta, vortices, membranes, matrices, etc. 22. Theories and practices change like in a kaleidoscope, the soul remains the same. 
thought still exists even without science. The body performs movement as it did billions of years ago. Nothing changes. The digestive system functions and will continue to function until this planet, and many others, cease to exist. What is our development? It shouldn't be there at all, as we were created complete. It was the whim of hubris that caused these anomalies, that we now claim knowledge and various resources, because we lost almost everything. In the original they didn't matter, because everything was complete and free. Hopefully, we will return to heaven. Jesus brought this knowledge and faith, refreshed it. 23. My constant daily food is only the spell of contentment and happiness. Otherwise, it is difficult to live. Although suffering always prevails in this earthly system, the body is not so important. The body dries up with time, like water in a swamp. What matters is the overflow of soul into the reality we still see with our eyes. This enchants us for the time being. But after the physical body falls, our original body will appear, the senses of which are purely heavenly. These give unlimited happiness. The physical cells deceive us, they obscure everything. Until then, we are so fused with the body that we can't imagine life without it. Well, we are born here, and other cosmic manipulators help us with it. We have completely forgotten about liberation. 24. For every soul heaven means something different, Padre Pio's words, but the differences are not so great that they spread love on a leash. Enchantments. And that means a splendor of variations, as in music. Love is different, and everyone loves it like crazy. So many delights with it, pleasant moments spent, so much wine drunk for two, flowers, perfumes, pretty lines on the eyelids of ladies, beautiful tattoos, so many spontaneous dances and kisses, so much wonderful poetry, pictures painted with gestures, so much mystical marijuana. This is how heaven expresses simply, but differently, with full grace and the craft of self-control, so as not to overfire too much and cause distaste in the intimacies of souls. 25. The soul, it is worth knowing, always has a body, even on earth, soul body, heaven, it is an inseparable unity, even God has a body, but who would think about that? We don't know how to observe it yet. Would God be limited by schemes? Common sense tells us that the opposite is true. That's why we love God so much, because we expect everything from Him. To satisfy all our fantasies, whatever they may be. The point is to make everyone happy in their own unique way, without limitation. 26. Why are the senses sad? Pity them. It's true. They are sad because they feel nothing and see nothing when it comes to the great love of the afterlife. The older they get, the weaker they feel anything. How sad it is after all. But it must be so, until the fruits of our ancient actions fall, and are transformed into flavors from heaven. 27. You want to have joy to fly somewhere high? Then surrender your soul to the narration of fairy tale. Your fairy tales are the most beautiful, straight from heaven. In life on the planets, in the reality of quantum mechanics, or just Einstein's theory, your fairy tales will actually never come out never come to fruition. Because scientific theories have been falsifying matter from the beginning of the world, and reinforcing it with lies against subtlety and love. But that's okay, because joy comes from the intangible and invisible with the eyes. Therefore, dreams are real always in your greatest strength and power imagination, from where visions and daily feelings are drawn. Higher meditations and ordinary sensual, here and now, this is the most wonderful reality of your vision, your momentary subtle delight, the acquisition of secret knowledge. This is mysticism to the measure of eternal existence. Earth is a reflection, a shadow of heaven. Life here is entangled in the problems of law, artificial conscience, rules and very weak, second heavenly sex. It is worth noting that The soul is primarily a generous non-egoistic imagination and will. Whoever tastes it, will quickly find eternal heaven, but beyond matter, in the matter of heavenly energy. 28. Justification is a manifestation of tolerance, of which the friendliest is always love. 29. Tolerance respects freedom, 
It is the highest form of love on earth, for which one gives own life, such as a mother for her children, even the bad ones. 30. Publicans and harlots will overtake you into the kingdom of heaven. Poor Jesus, what a blow he must have received for those words. 31. God hid behind kindness and mercy, behind giving himself to us without limit. 32. Love on earth is not just joy. Complete joy is a distant future. 33. The light of the world is imperceptible. It shines effectively, but no one hardly sees it. It is hidden in love and mercy. Saint Sister Faustina Kowalska understood this well. Good friend, a good friend is like a rock you can lean on confidently. It's hard not to think about him. It's hard not to trust him in him there is a knot of heart and good advice. By his side are the scents of roses and his strong belt surrounds you too. By him all your buds will bloom, a good friend is your peace. Fragrant oil stretched over your body. He knows everything to be gentle and tender. He is your knight and his nectars intoxicate your soul. In his presence you forget all that has gone wrong. He is your chalice of wine and under your feet he spreads flowers abundantly. He is your servant and master. You will trust no one as much as you trust him. He is simple and his ways always lead the paths of truth and love. He is your happiness and therefore your days pass very pleasantly. 34. Our souls certainly and partly our present bodies were made in the image, likeness and pattern of God. We are almost the same as he is, as far as souls are concerned. But such was the tinkering he did with us, so that we can just feel it, that we are free deities. God is we, it is said, but this is at the same time very dangerous, because thanks to this feeling, evil and suffering were created as a consequence. Only humility can keep this feeling that we are sparks of God, Otherwise it gives birth to privation, galaxies, suffering, hell in these galaxies. To call oneself God is a terrible risk. You have to be careful about that, and very careful. 35. About the perfect God, we always have the best possible opinion and image. At the creation of this world, he was probably a lousy God, inept. For how could he arrange such a terrible hell for us? Where one attacks and even murders another. Youth is madness and irresponsibility, and old age is infirmity, pain and resignation. Are these the kinds of things the good father would give us? We know in our hearts that no, 36, creative acts of foolish creation, there could have been more. Arguably this is the case. We belong to the circle of one of many cosmic odysseys. For our consciousness, such material or semi-material worlds could be infinite. I emphasize for our consciousness, because for God Almighty, omniscient, all universes created, are limited, because they do not come from Him. There is nothing to look for other cosmic stories, because we completely lack access to them. For us, the story in which we actively participate must suffice, and we still know very little about the history of our galaxy or our Earth. Scraps literally. However, it is necessary to make an attempt at answers. Otherwise, we will learn nothing. If we do not undertake spiritual development, i.e., learning the truth, we will have a problem getting out of this tragic cosmos to the eternal land of the true, loving God Mother Lover, to the world of the wonderful society of beautiful beings, from our fairy tales. 37. As one looks at even the Milky Way, which is churning with fire, dust, radiation and explosions of crashing suns and planets, it may be similar in the higher invisible realms. This is what even Saint Paul once said about it. How he came to this conclusion, I don't know. But he stated, all have sinned. He used the word sinned. But I wouldn't apply it anymore. For those times maybe it was acerbic. I believe that freedom, and then the lack of a constant source of power, after the departure of the angels from heaven, caused the degeneration of atomic and subtler systems affecting even the soul. The soul suffered a flaw Padre Pio's words, and there is a cosmic and personal effect of this. 38. Beautiful is the world. Is there no us? There is no world. And there are many worlds. They can delight and penetrate each other, caress each other with a gentle smile, and something else incomprehensible. But that's not all. There are worlds far more beautiful than the one we live in. 
These are the ones to strive for, my nature. How do I know that the nature of my eternal bliss and knowledge? How do I know that eternity shines through me like the stars in the night? I heard the rumble of avalanches and the crush of suffering, but I understood that the wisest is love, beauty and knowledge. How do I know that? 39. Looking at this world and people of ours, I see the things of God, even though they are not original, since they were created by God's children. But I try to spiritualize and glorify them for the greater common good. Although I criticize evil and collapse, I immediately talk about the philosophy of love and try to tip the scales to the side of good. Nevertheless, this is a divine world, even a hellish one, because it is inspired by God's children and therefore by God's love for his children. I know for sure that one day, through the promotion of goodness and love, everyone will return to their true home, the palace. And on earth, the promotion of goodness will also reap its wonderful harvest. Because that's what everyone is really after, goodness, prosperity, peace and love, following the heavenly pattern. Therefore, for the time being, it is necessary to talk about everything, about peace, about wars, about threats, about media, about politics, about everything. Talking means seeking and showing, and this leads to revealing the greatest truths for humanity. 40. Beings from the higher realms, angels lost in their cunning, will hopefully regain their former luster and splendor, being once beautiful angels, and they too, at the present stage of their finite existence, also have their needs. The expression of these needs is also shared by all humans, without exception. We have a close relationship with them, for they are our present genetic, physical life. We are in a way, their blueprint of humanity. If we understand this, we will overcome cognition. The whole cosmos expects this, the souls of thinkers using logic and mysticism beyond logic. In this way we can go beyond them and free ourselves from the bonds of life manipulation and gain the fullness without any limitations, the basis of which is unconditional, infinite love. 41. The scheme is quite simple and standard for everyone. Each time our consciousness is taken from us when we descend to earth as a soul. A person is born and actually does not know where he comes from or where he is going. He starts as if from nothing. He has to learn everything and get to know everything. So let's ask the fundamental question, why is this so? Isn't this some kind of hopeless situation? Bah, a catastrophe. If the magnificent, overprivileged God created us, why did he make us completely illiterate from the moment of conception? Somehow I don't believe it. Logic dictates that this is not normal. The Blessed One, the One God, is too wonderful to mess us up like this. Something must have happened to make life incredibly complicated. And on every level. The very fact that we rise from dust and turn into dust. This is some kind of paranoia. Between birth and death, unbelievably unpleasant things happen. 42. Even thinking makes it difficult for us, let alone say something clever. Everyone knows this, because they experience it on themselves. Goodness and love, light and joy are rather scarce here. I am of the opinion that it is worth exposing this, to expose the defects that someone has wrought on us in this earthly life. Because clearly, someone is hiding something here. The answer is clear. It was not the perfect God who created this world and the man in it, but someone else, but similar to him. 43. O oh, heavenly world, princess of my heart, what butterflies fly in my head, how many wandering lands I carry for you, were you my beloved, with your splendor overshadowed all this world's wonders. For what good are they to me as I look at the inconceivable beauty, which blinds my sight and softens my heart, so that you are most beautiful to me my heaven in the lands of eternal delights. 44. Sometimes it's like this, the more you suffer, the more you feel, and the more you love, the more you understand others. But this applies to the cosmos. Outside it is quite different, more optimistic, without the lessons and experiences of fate. 45. For a physicist there is no physicist, for a chemist there is no chemist, for a mystic there is no mystic. There is life based on love and life through love. Without love and the knowledge that lives in it, 
life does not arise. 46. As we know, history on this planet is quite intricate, and due to the distant time, also mysterious. Mother Earth has carried many nations, cultures, and civilizations. Various strange things have played out here. I am also convinced that there were civilizations much higher than ours. But the trace of them has disappeared. This is what Padre Pio told me about. Perhaps someday it will be confirmed with great accuracy. But I somewhat doubt it, because it was a very long time ago. I do not have the artifacts in my hand, but I know about it, thanks to logic and intuition. Some, moreover, also talk about it. And if you approach the subject from another side, for example, from the side of the wandering of souls, we can easily deduce that since we have lived many times, in many civilizations, some echo remains in us each time, hence we feel that this is possible. Every person carries some sort of baggage of experience from previous lives, although one is not always aware of it. 47. Love does not envy, does not seek applause, etc., is for everyone. Yes, you can be with one person if you love, but your heart should be given to every person, and this is the essence of love. Everything can be beautiful even with two people, but they must feel love for everyone equally. I'm not saying it's easy here on earth. Many things can get complicated because of this. I will say this, you need to be divine madmen together, and then it is wonderful in every way. Earth is a temporary and imperfect state. In the heavenly world, love is universal and belongs to everyone, without attachments, as on earth. 48. Sometimes it's like this, if someone senses that you outgrow him with your field of vision and reading of reality, although you don't feel it that way yourself, but out of a good heart you do, he turns away from you. But for what reason? Instead of being happy that someone knows more and gives something fantastic for the common good, A. It's the ego as usual that turns the mill to power. 49. You've got a broken pen but the crosshair somehow scribbled. Two dashes and so intriguing. 50. Help God my rebellion to be even positively greater. 51. You catch the mouse and you are satisfied. With what? You have to catch God if you want to be like him. And then everything will be yours and the mouse and this and that. 52. God, why is everyone afraid and people and animals? Why is it so? Could it be lack of happiness? underdevelopment, lack of knowledge, disease, death? Who came up with this incomplete nature that haunts us? You Lord, I don't believe it. Someone else must have been to blame. You are too good God. 53. Turn the world upside down and you'll bring harmony closer to. 54. You made me so I am. Then now show me your humility. Because in me so much pride still. 55. You become wise only when you have grasped the irrationality of the world, the incalculability of movement, when you have understood emptiness and fulfillment, and your reason not knowing. 56. In a word, you are smart because God messed up your head, hence you see this world as it is through the mistake of creation. 57. I think because I am stupid. If I were smart, I wouldn't think with anxiety, but would know from happiness. 58. Let's try to unlock love after all, so that we can learn about true knowledge, delight, God and his fantastic, endless, fairy tale world of forms. And by the way, our own cosmic world, which is not as fairy tale as we would like it to be. 59. What matters above all is love. One cannot be good without love. Even selfishness is some form of love, perhaps imperfect, but it is there. Love is desire, science, wisdom and creative urge. Even staunch opponents of divine love use it, completely unaware of it. Freedom, too, is an expression of divine love. Atheism, likewise, beliefs, 60. Views are views, reason is reason, imperfection is imperfection. The ideal exists in the realm of the ideal and should be pursued. Whether one is an opponent or a supporter, even the very desire to live is a ray of the ideal. Either way, each of us knows exactly whether we are doing right or wrong. Whether we are honest, upright, or a delicious rebel based on the will of the opposition. 61. The fact is that the lack of ideals and virtues in life gives rise to unjust rebellion and opposition to everything we do not understand. 
or do not feel in our own way, but is this wisdom, or is it just freedom? This must be understood, otherwise we will be in opposition to other outlooks, other pictures painted by life than our personal one. Conflict can arise very quickly. The true wisdom of love overcomes all science, and any psychology of being. In this regard, most problems are with politics, views, religions, sex and scientists, who fight in the pages of publications for their truths. Science continues to be debunked anyway by science. Few people know that 2 plus 2 is not 4 at all. We still live in the infancy of science and mysticism. 62. Life is not just about freedom, but about its healthy fruits. They should be positive and good. But this is not the case at all. Mistakes, unpredictability, various problems, indispositions, lack of money, or an excess of money, free speech without the craftsmanship of culture, art without the passion of beauty and tact, can cause a negative revolution in life, in the family, in the state system, eventually leading to a war conflict. The leftist, atheist world has a lot of such qualities that transcend the gift of freedom. Unfortunately, religions also have this tendency. It is not true that we are not in the same boat. We all sit at the bottom of the same cosmic bag and saints in this life, and non-saints. People without talents and artists with talents as one. Mixed with confusion in full swing on a daily basis. This is nothing unusual, the cosmic standard at every level of existence. We only try to isolate ourselves with education and posturing, a mask of ego nature. You want to like God, try to be above it all. The world above this world heals our delight, our secret fairy tales and colorful heavenly pleasures of existence. 63. Everyone needs to control themselves so that they don't clench their fists of freedom and hatred. Yet apparently it still has to be so. The next incarnations of leftist angels will have already stopped insulting their and their neighbors' dignity. This may take several lifetimes. After time, all cosmic angels including the primate will recognize the eternal heaven and there they will eventually find themselves. Padre Pio told me so that everyone will enter heaven. God is constantly striving for this. 64. Freedom is nothing in the face of good, except that freedom is also a good. But not everything that is allowed brings benefit. There are also those who call evil a good. And here is the problem. For one, something may be a sin. For another, the same thing with a different characterization, etc. No longer. Therefore, love which is forgiving and tolerant should unite everyone regardless of characters and acquired knowledge, views. Then there is no need to make theaters of hatred, acting humiliation. Be normal and a little positively crazy. Then no one will be threatened by anything. 65. Jesus grieved and suffered, primarily because of the words of others. He had to flee at times to avoid being beaten. What were those words? Well, the same as today. Painful, radical, unmerciful, 66. Here you comfort me, Lord, and here you make me cry at the same time, 67. If you love, you should find excuses for all, including your own failings, if only, not understanding others, their various fears and sufferings, 68. Everyone wants to pretend that they are beautiful and wonderful, and in the meantime, unfortunately, he is beautiful. But temporarily in this life, his robes are soiled. Anyone who has incarnated here will have various problems, and at certain times will let go of his nerves. Calls for perfection of the psyche, calls for the virtue of patience. This is what they testify to. 69. The more you pretend to be holy and exemplary, the more you will sink into pride in yourself, and you will begin to reek of pride at a distance. 70. For every memory, you can recreate heaven for yourself, at least for the duration of that sigh. 71. On earth it may be like heaven to you, but only in memories. Where there are screams and wars, heaven flees, because it is not its climate. 72. To wish everyone well, this is work of the highest kind. It doesn't get any higher than being friendly, kind. So there is no reason to worry and stress about being unnecessary. 73. You don't understand what I understand and that's why we don't understand each other. 
and it could have been so close. 74. Nothing matters whether one understands or not, feels or not, everything counts before God. You don't have knowledge, and God has it. Even your mysticism is nothing before God. He will always love more than you, and he will always know everything, while you don't. Even the angels in heaven do not know everything. Padre Pio's words, 75. If it weren't for music, faith, hope, and the colors of life, you would have long since been on powerful corporate psychotropics and swayed senseless by the wishes of educated doctors. 76. The energy of life is still out of our control. Ancient civilizations had the same problem, as does modern science. No one had and has a monopoly on truth. So we have no particular reason to be proud of any achievements. On Earth, we do not live in a state of openness of all secrets. Our support is only faith. Man lacks the necessary senses and talents to know the whole truth about himself and the world. It seems that we will have to wait for a long time before knowledge and love begin to dance the dance of fullness. Every day we are invited by God to this ball. There is one condition. In order to participate in this ball, it is necessary to properly decorate, dress up. It must be colorful and beautiful, and this attractive attire is unconditional love. In love, one can learn all the attractive mysteries of heaven and earth and participate in them wholeheartedly. 77. Human life as if to look at it is a hard piece of bread, a cold cause of work and coercion from various sides, and the soul craves joy no matter what kind. A moment of self-pleasure fun makes it warm. In the midst of those awful Kolkha's works, scientific, philosophical, or religious, liberation is not a bad thing. It gives a little joy, a smile, admiration, and the soul would constantly like to be in awe, because that is its curious nature. I'm paraphrasing, hey there, tired of digesting inconveniences, come to me, and I will comfort you. I ask for a little madness, for health, thoughts, and peace of heart. 78. Time is art, time is love. It is high time for love and prosperity to overcome discontent. Suffering is artificially induced by the drunk geneticists of the cosmos, who have no desire to this day to return to eternal life, where nothing is ever missing. They prefer to experiment and create beauty mixed with tragedy and death. This should not be condoned. But what can we do when we have partially consented to it? And now we are complaining, e.g., every disabled person on earth knew they would be in life. All those who died in Auschwitz knew before they were born what would befall them. The words of Padre Pio. And yet they did nothing spiritually to get out of this swamp, even before they were born. Everyone who is reincarnated on earth somewhat accepts this, accepts this cold cause of labor and exploitation through suffering caused, in a way, by love itself. If man were stronger and wiser, he would put up resistance. We all fail in this in all lives on the planets by different stars. We have a false consciousness that life on the planets is heaven. Meanwhile, this is not true. Yes, heaven has something of the planets, but it is more beautiful and peaceful there. Perfect matter. There is something of heaven on earth, Padre Pio's words. 79. Regarding our planet, some believe that it is flat, others that it is a sphere, and still others that life is on its surface, and at the same time inside. There are also those who believe that humanity lives only inside this sphere, and that our world is concave, despite the fact that we see it convex. They claim that beyond the earth there is only an abyss, and there are no galaxies or planets. Where is the truth? One thing for sure is that all previous civilizations have sought the truth. To us modern ones it does likewise, but among the seekers and explorers, there were also those who deliberately lied to the public. Today it is similar. Some do it knowingly, others not. Who then can be believed? In my opinion, no one can ever be believed 100%, because in part we know, or rather, all our lives we learn to know. So the horizon of truth is very far ahead of humanity. Scientific evidence for this or that is imprecise and partial. 80. In human life, emotions are unlikely to be balanced in the body. Well, see, you think something, someone upsets you, someone steps on your heel, reprimands you, 
someone has a different opinion, challenges it with his arguments, and you in turn challenge his views. And already emotions are born, nerves, already your heart is beating faster and even stings and wants to jump out of your chest. Isn't it all kind of strange and disharmonious? It shouldn't be like this. And yet it is taking place. Does it serve the health, the pleasure of the body? Because of stress and nerves, a woman won't even get pregnant, let alone mystical experiences. Echo these contradictions. They turn our longings inside out. We must resist it, otherwise we will die, like a flower after blooming. It's a pity, because we have possibilities similar to God. 81. The ancient science, nor the modern science, and this also applies to philosophy and religion, did not and does not know everything. Even the so-called mystics could understand life at a certain ceiling. Most of the truth remained hidden from them. This is probably logical. 82. Looking at the process of our extremely narrow-minded thinking, we can deduce that the human brain is incapable of embracing omniscience, much less God. The brain is very inefficient, archaic, it would be better not to have one, because it has become a beachhead for the attack of evil. The brain is a tool of our non-development. The brain was pressed into us by other civilizations, who particularly cared about it, purely for economic gain. The rulers of the cosmos have the perfect tool of energy production to keep this fallen scientific world alive. 83. Every emotion, every struggle, every suffering, every curse, and the vast amount of infantile knowledge we now possess is energy for them. The masters of the cosmos, to live and survive, when we were created, including evolutionary elements. They knew exactly what they expected from this creation. And they got it. That's why I will add, almost no one gets out of this earth. Everyone comes back here, and to other similar planets. Few manage to escape from here. But it is possible. Everyone has a chance. He must want it and pray for it to his true parents, God. The hubris and artificial beauty of the failed nature brings us back to Earth and the galaxies. It is worth realizing this while we still have this poor quality, the brain, because despite its darkness, much depends on it. Fortunately, it is linked to freedom and soul consciousness. Although it is our crush, it tries to remember the soul as our eternal being. And this is where our victory lies, to remember our own soul and true heaven. 84. It is necessary to not get involved in a person, but in his muse. The muse is everything in a person. It is what should be loved in him. The nature of the body and the vibration of the cells cannot satisfy the imagination of the soul. They can only through the pleasure of the body direct to the right goal, which is the muse of the soul God. 85. The human body is not a product of God. It is the result of the genetic engineering of the creator gods the angels, those who founded the private heavens in the galaxies. God created heavenly bodies, eternally young and beautiful. They are waiting for us after we leave this. The human body is imbued with transience. It is sickly, weak. Well, and so be it, if it still can't do otherwise. In heaven, everyone belongs to everyone. Completely different concept of coexistence. That's why Jesus said that there one does not marry, nor does one get married. 86. Our soul is so manipulated with various overlays, including the bodily overlay, that just one word and you explode, explode. You lose your peace and faith for a few seconds, or even longer. Sometimes one word will kill everything in you that is most beautiful and valuable for years to come. But words of love and goodness, however, do not wreak this havoc. Therefore, it is worth using only words supported by love. 87. In life, it's all about the quants turning over in their heads and the light understanding their addiction. Then our bodies will also get better. The soul has nothing to do with the energies and light from this galaxy. Is it difficult? Difficult to understand as long as we live here in this flimsy world, a pseudo heaven created by fallen angels. 88. Today there are disputes on various key topics. One of them is the issue of our Earth and space. Scientists, astronomers, argue about various issues on this topic. Philosophical and theological institutes do the same. 
Some cite ancient transmissions, others modern research. And who is right? I believe that in part, both know some part of the truth, but it is certainly not the whole mystery uncovered. I stick to the words of Jesus. Let me quote them again. I have yet much to say to you, but now you cannot bear it. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will lead you into all truth. For me, the matter is clear. Neither modern science, nor religion, nor antiquity knows, and did not know the whole truth. So the insistence of one and the other that they know something because they have studied it or intuitively sensed it makes no sense. One side and the other should cut each other some slack and be tolerant of science, religion and ancient writings. 89. As I observe life, the various material civilizations in our world, because for me every other animal species is another civilization. I can clearly see that yes we like and value these civilizations, but still, we only want to make love with humanoids. Somehow we are closest and most loving. In the galaxies it is similar. Each civilization predisposes to its shapes and loves them. That's the way it is, and there's nothing we can do about it. Scientists of higher civilizations have figured it out that way. But supposedly mythical stories talk about people with hooves, people with animal bodies. Could it be that geneticists are up to something? But that's ancient history. Dinosaurs are also a scientific misfire. 90. Life stops hurting only when the soul frees itself from all energy and light particles, that is, temporarily and snapshot fixed in us in an artificial way, because it is energy that hurts, the great mystery. And what doesn't hurt? True love, beyond any hint of rudeness. She works on the principle of unconditional power. Probably that is why only she, love, happens to be the greatest positive revolution in our world. 91. God is not cruel and suffering serves no purpose. But, there are plenty of gods in the cosmos. Every superior angel wants to be called a god. One more thing, why is this so? Well, we all came out of heaven to see what is behind the veil. We created cosmos, private heavens, and here is the real problem. The lack of power, the lack of perpetual motion in the material worlds has tied everyone down. Hardly, despite this tragic nature and killing for energy, we do not let go. Especially those who control us do not forgive. God has nothing to do with this. He allowed freedom. Freedom has consequently caused an odyssey of development, as well as suffering and even complete collapse. Hence, it is so difficult for us to find harmony and heaven in the soul. It is difficult to understand. Certainly God is love, he allows everything. Otherwise, he would not be God, but a tyrant. Indeed, suffering can be used for a higher purpose. Padre Pio is a great example of this. He is not the only one, likewise Francis of Assisi and many others. We too can offer our own suffering to others as a very valuable gift. 92. Actually, no philosophy, no spirituality or religion should interest us. Because by our very nature, we are spiritual. We think, we are, we feel, regardless of environment, education, knowledge and beliefs. All the time we live in paradise, temporarily lost, but paradise nonetheless. All we have to do is look, admire and be grateful. Here is all philosophy, here is all religion, here is all our ecstasy and love. We are making so-called progress, yes. What else can be done? One can think more about the original paradise, the fairy tale paradise, referred to by Jesus as heaven, and by Plato as the idea. 93. What can be developed when everything is developed? What can be sought when everything is? Why worry as we have joy at our beck and call? Why seek heaven as you have it in your thoughts and feelings? Why strive for riches as the whole world belongs to you? Your whole self is at your disposal. You think, feel, desire and have what you want. Not necessarily only in this world, which is unoriginal. But the soul for that you have an original one. In it you have everything right away, from the hand. And why do you need religion, atheism? Why development, rules, systems? What for? They only get in the way of love and its taste. Heaven works differently in reality than our fallen reality. It needs to be discovered. 94. Heaven is the nature of the soul. The nature of the soul is heaven. It is necessary to prove it to oneself. 
That's why Jesus explained to all the unconvinced that heaven carries with it everywhere. Simple, uncomplicated, without views, feeling without limits, always and everywhere. The soul is love without measure or space, ready for delight at any moment. The soul, constantly in a state of openness, is sensitive to love, like a flower that feels the sun, it turns to it, opening its petals to welcome and exchange its powers of love. The soul is a focus of goodness and love, beauty and delight, beyond everything, and in everything. 95. Do not be fooled by spirituality harsh, ascetic, radical, complicated for the mind, psyche and body, based on the knowledge sucked from the finger of various books, written under the dictates of the ego. This will be your real success of the soul and body. For this is not spirituality, but a fiction of a certain leftist, atheist ideology. This is usually the action of a fallen angel lined with temporary, second-hand beauty, without the permanence of being, and usually without the sensations of alcohol, drugs, the emotions of financiers, fraud through the law and the illumination of knowledge and art. We do not make it in this world. This is what we replace for ourselves the original existence, which is pleasure on the basis of desires and wants. Delight and delight are a difference. In physics, delight is often trampled, in heaven it is glorified. 96. Spirituality is love, even without knowledge, although it is unavoidable in these systems of life anyway. The hardest thing, however, is to get an education in goodness and love. This is something we learn all our lives, despite the degrees, doctorates, various papers for knowledge we have earned. And love, justification of the other, tolerance, understanding gentleness, lack of harshness, sharing everything with others. This university is the most difficult, but also the sweetest in sensations, and no one has to take an exam from it. Everyone knows what they want and what they aspire to. There must be so many crazy desires and aspirations until we finally gain eternity. 97. Sometimes when something is gnawing at you, you can't find a place for yourself, and thoughts keep going around the same and tiring. You need to break it in some way. Go for a walk, take a streetcar ride, a car ride, take it slow. In other words, get outside. This way you will cover the troublesome thoughts with other, peaceful, joyful ones. And everything will change. Sleep also does good. Two high hopes that a person makes for himself are often, 